In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her holy rosary. Today, we join her in contemplating the Annunciation. In Nazareth tonight, we find the Holy Virgin kneeling in prayer. The temple in Jerusalem is silent. A new temple is here in Nazareth. The Virgin is already the Immaculate, full of grace, holier than that temple in Jerusalem. But tonight, the greatest event in the history of the world will take place. Does the Holy Virgin know what is to take place this night? Does she have any indication already of what is to occur? St. Joseph is away. Perhaps he has gone for work somewhere. He certainly is not here in Nazareth this night. Our Lady remains motionless, kneeling at prayer. We learn in the writings and the visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich that upon this night the whole of nature was filled with an extraordinary expectation. A mass of light gathered in the Holy Virgin's room. Nature anticipated what was about to occur. The arrival of its Lord, of its Master. In the intimacies of prayer, suddenly, a shining white youth appears with flowing yellow hair. The angel Gabriel. Gently moving his arms, he speaks to her. Words issue from his mouth. These beautiful words contained in sacred scripture. Our Lady hears these words. And perhaps only then does she raise her eyes and respond to the angel. There's a short exchange between the two of them. Before finally... She says those blessed words, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. The whole of nature stood still in anticipation of those words. The souls in limbo, the patriarchs, they paused, they breathed in with expectation as they awaited those words to flow from the Virgin's lips. The angel awaited an answer. The whole of creation awaited an answer. All of her ancestors, her holy ancestors, awaited an answer from limbo. And as she uttered, Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, what joy was brought to them. The Saviour was to come. It was certain. This scene reminds us of the garden, the Garden of Eden. But here we do not find Eve. We do not find an Eve who is consorting with a wicked angel and bringing destruction, damnation to humanity. Rather, we see another virgin, a holy virgin, conversing with a good angel and in obeying the angel, in consenting to the plans of Almighty God, she becomes the co-redemptrix, the one, that handmaid, the handmaid of the Lord, the handmaid of God's plan for salvation. The Ave has changed the name of Eva. It has reversed it. The damage done by Eve is now being reversed by Our Lady's fiat. And heaven rejoices, 
the souls in limbo rejoice. Even nature, which is enslaved on the bondage to sin, rejoices at these holy words. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And with these words, the angel vanishes. The incarnation has occurred. God has become man. The word has become flesh. Perhaps at this moment, perhaps at this moment, Saint Anne, who surely was still living with the Holy Virgin, perhaps she came and peeked into Our Lady's room. What did she see at that moment? She saw Our Lady in ecstasy, surrounded by light. And modestly, she departed, leaving the Virgin at prayer. This all took place about midnight. A cloud of light appeared above the house. Our Lady had her little lamp lit. She was praying as she was accustomed to pray at night. Saint Anne saw the mystery and respectfully withdrew. We continue now to consider Our Lady's virtues that are displayed here in this great mystery. We see her love of prayer. Our Lady stays awake all night at prayer and this was not a unique event for her. Our Lady loved to spend time with Almighty God in the silent hours of the night. When the whole world was silent, she delighted in listening to God's voice. And what of you? When was the last time you spent the night in prayer? When was the last time you kept Almighty God company during those hours when the world, when much of the world is committing great and grievous sins? What a virtue we see in our Blessed Lady's love of prayer. We see her mortification of the senses. There is no curiosity as this angelic being arrives. She doesn't startle. She rarely, she barely raises her eyes from her prayer. And only when she's beckoned to does she give him any regard. And what about us? When someone enters the church, how quick we are to want to see who it is. When a point springs to mind, how quick we are in wanting to assert it. Oh, our blessed mother. Teach me to mortify my tongue. Teach me to mortify my curiosity. And what humility we see in this mystery. The angel says, Hail, full of grace. And Our Lady is deeply disturbed at these words. She's not puffed up with pride when the angel tells her this divine compliment. She's deeply disturbed. She's shocked by these words. And what about you? If you hear a word of compliment, are you disturbed? Do you recognize your nothingness, your littleness? When you are fail, when a compliment is not brought your way, do you feel indignation inside of you? A certain pride? that your qualities have been overlooked. Oh, Blessed Mother, you were deeply disturbed at these words of, these words of praise. Well, you could imagine a sinful person being puffed with pride at that moment, saying, oh, thank you very much. Yes, I am, I am full of grace. No, Our Lady was deeply disturbed and wondered what the angel could be referring to. We are so aware of our own qualities, but Our Lady, in her naturalness, her holy simplicity, 
was deeply disturbed at these words. Our Lady loves her own chastity. She loves this great gift that God has offered her of perpetual continence. For while she has married Saint Joseph, their marriage is to be chaste. And when the angel proposes what seems to be a required violation of chastity, at the fourth of it, she dares to interrupt the angel and profess to him that she's already made a vow of virginity. How can this come about since I am a virgin? My state in life is virginity. I'm consecrated to the Lord. She did not see the angel's words as a get out clause for this great promise of celibacy. No, she was horrified at the thought that her vow would have to be violated. She knew that would be impossible. She loved her chastity, her virginity, this great gift that she was offering and had offered to Almighty God. And what a view. Impure thoughts, fantasies, thinking of lives that could have been Futures that could have been. Oh, Our Lady prized the vows she had made. The vows she made in her youth. We read in Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich that Our Lady had promised chastity from the very first moments of reason. Perhaps when, humanly speaking, one could argue she was incapable of such a vow, of such a promise. Perhaps she could have rationalised later and said, oh, I was very young when I made that promise. Now I'm older. I can reconsider it. But no, the Virgin loved chastity and the vow that she had made in her youth. We admire her discretion. What few words she speaks to this angel. And then after the heavenly apparition, Silence. She doesn't broadcast the news. She doesn't knock on St. Anne's bedroom door to tell her what has taken place. She doesn't inform St. Joseph as soon as he returns. Our Lady keeps the message silent. God has not told her that she is to share this news with anyone. And so she prizes this intimate secret of the Incarnation. How can we, we can barely constrain ourselves with the smallest piece of news. How it itches our tongues to share it. Oh, Blessed Mother, help us to have discretion, especially in things of God, in graces that God has given us. In sharing the graces, in sharing news of the graces, how much is lost. But in having a secret with Almighty God, how much is won? How much intimacy is created between you and your beloved? Lovers share secrets. They're not spread abroad. And for Our Lady, Almighty God, was her most beloved. Submission to God's holy will. We see in this mystery, we see here in this mystery that fiat, be it done to me according to thy word. Our Lady accepts God's will for her, mediated through an angel. She accepts it not in full knowledge of what is to come to pass, although surely she was aware of the prophecies. But she accepts what God asks of her promptly 
without hesitation, wholeheartedly, an acceptance that will be echoed and re-echoed every moment of our life from now on. And what about us? Trying to look for get-out clauses, rejecting harder teachings of Holy Mother Church, disobeying spiritual directors. Blessed Mother, teach me to be obedient to God's holy will, even when it is mediated. And faith, above all this mystery, shows Our Lady's faith. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. She's been promised that inside of her is the word made flesh, but she doesn't see this. She doesn't feel this. She believes. She believes that this infant inside of her womb is the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And after the angel has left her, after the ecstasy is finished, she walks in faith and she begins her journey very shortly to Saint Elizabeth. But who can doubt she did not jump up immediately? No, she spent a long time in thanksgiving, in contemplation, in ecstasy, enraptured in the joys of what had taken place, of God dwelling inside of her. O oh, Blessed Mother, teach me how to make my thanksgiving in Holy Communion, lengthy thanksgiving, time of intimacy, time of closeness to the Divine Lord who is physically inside of me in those moments after Holy Communion. Blessed Mother, be my teacher in all things. Guide me by your virtues. Help me to imitate what you contain. To help me to imitate what, are, what is contained in your Immaculate Heart. And then to obtain the promise of your Immaculate Heart, namely the conversion of sinners, my own conversion, the conversion of of those dear to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.